news. Chris Columbus has signed on to direct, produce, and write a big screen adaptation of the video game Five Nights at Freddy's for Bloomhouse. Link for the Deadline article in the show notes below. Is this going to be a success or not? A continually, over and over again, we see Hollywood try and make these films that stem from all of this mythos and lore that happens in video games, and then it's just a big swing and a miss at the box office. A couple years back, I actually wrote an article about this. I'm gonna throw a link for that article in the description box below if you wanna check it out. At this point, it is, it's not outdated, but it is kind of outdated because we're at the time of that article, we are waiting for Warcraft, the movie, to come out. But all of the points I make in that article are still relevant and topical today. So when we look at this film, we have one of two choices. We can either say this is going to be just another big swing and a miss because Hollywood just doesn't know how, for whatever reason, to find the right team, the right director, and everybody else to make these, these video game adaptations work on the big screen. Or we can say maybe because it's Bloomhouse and they have a really good track record with horror, that they'll be able to take this game that's bit more of a horror-based game and actually make it work on the big screen. But before we do that, let's take a look back at some of the films that have already come out that are based off of video games, just in case you're looking at me going, wait a minute, Jeremy, not all of these movies have been terrible. There's probably been one or two hidden gems like that have come out that were based based on video games. So you could be right, but before I say you're definitely right, let's take a look over the movies that have come out that were based on video games, and then I'll let you decide if that's an accurate statement that you just made about how there's at least maybe one or two hidden gems in all of Hollywood history of making these video games come to life on the big screen. So on my notes here, I wrote down a bunch of films that have already come out. Some of these are in the article in the description box below, but just in case you don't have time to reference that article, we'll just list off a few of them here right now. So we have Super Mario Brothers, Street Fighter, Double Dragon, the Mortal Kombat franchise, the Tomb Raider franchise, including the new Tomb Raider that's about to come out. Then we've got the Resident Evil franchise, the movie Doom, the Hitman franchise, Max Payne, Prince of Persia, The Need for Speed, Warcraft, Assassin's Creed, Wing Commander, House of the Dead, and Blood Rain. So going through that list, maybe there's one or two that you didn't even realize were video game movies. Maybe you didn't see them in theaters, they just passed right by you. Maybe you saw them, but you saw them on DVD or on cable or something like that. Either way, as we go through that list, there's really not a lot of shining examples for the video game adaptations. Now for me personally, the first Mortal Kombat movie is entertaining. The first Tomb Raider movie with uh, Angelina Jolie, that was entertaining. And to be fair, the first Resident Evil movie was also entertaining. So yes, there are one or two hidden gems in this list, but as a whole, as a majority of, of a, a, a particular style, a particular brand of films, there really is just a big swing and a miss time and time again for this franchise. But again, let's look now at Bloomhouse as the production company that specializes in small budget horror films. And let's say that because they specialize in this brand, maybe Bloom House will be able to do for the video game genre what Marvel was able to do for the superhero genre. You've got a smaller production company that specializes in one type of film and does a very good job with that type of film from what their box office results are as well as their critic and uh, audience scores are. And they're going to step into this world now and try and take on a video game that was more horror based and scary and spooky and all that. And they're going to try and turn this into a film. So hopefully, fingers crossed, they've got this team together that is gonna be able to deliver something that is entertaining and something that is of value in a franchise, or in a genre rather, that has been lacking and suffering a great deal as far as uh, that's all concerned for video game movies. Go ahead and sound off below in the comments section with your thoughts about Bloomhouse stepping into this particular world for Five Nights at Freddy's. Do you think they'll be able to pull it off? Do you even wanna see a movie based on Five Nights at Freddy's? Did you play the game? What did you think of the game? Sound off below and let us know your thoughts. David Hassel Hasselhoff, Michael Fassbender, and Arnold Schwarzenegger are all set for roles in the Kung Fury remake currently in the works. Link for the Hollywood Reporter article in the show notes below. So if you're wondering what Kung Fury is, you can actually find it on YouTube. It's about 30 minutes long, 31 minutes long. Uh, it's, it's not very lengthy. I still haven't watched it. I need to now that they were going to do a full length film on this, on this short little uh, goofy adventure film that has to deal with, you know, martial arts and 
Nazis and dinosaurs and everything else crazy like that. So I'm curious to see kind of more from this, like what this film is actually gonna look like because when you add David Hasselhoff and Arnold Schwarzenegger to a film, you're already kind of leaning me towards the belief that this is just gonna be a fun film that doesn't take itself too seriously. When you read the synopsis of the movie, clearly this film does not take itself very seriously. But then you add Michael Fassbender, who's a very talented actor. So I had to sit back and go, well, what is his career path looking like? Like, where does he really wanna go? Because when I'm looking over his IMDb and I'm like going back and looking over the movies that I've seen that he's been in, his name attached to a film isn't necessarily getting me excited anymore for the film. A couple years ago, like I'd hear Michael Fassbender is gonna be in a movie. I was like, oh, this is probably gonna be a good movie because he's a really talented actor. Why would a really talented actor pick a bad movie to be in? I think that's a fair question. So I decided to pull up just kind of what he's done over the last couple of years, just the last three years, just to kind of see like, where where is he at? Like, what's he going for? And so on my notes here, we've got the the last film he did was The Snowman, then Alien Covenant, then Assassin's Creed, then Light Between Oceans, X-Men Apocalypse, Steve Jobs, Macbeth. When I look at this, I say he did a great job in Macbeth. I thought he pulled off an incredibly engaging performance. Uh, so if you haven't seen that, his performance is definitely worth the time checking that film out. And then everything that he's done with Magneto has been good and Steve Jobs was also good. But then he just has like this long list of films like surrounding all of those that just really aren't showcasing his ability to be an incredible actor. So in the last Alien movie, Alien Covenant, I thought his performance was good, but again, it's really not showcasing his ability as an actor because he just has to play like the stone cold sociopath in that movie. And then just another character that's a little bit more innocent and robotic at the same time. So it was fun to watch him kind of play off of the two different characters on screen as he had these monologues back and forth with himself since he's a robot, but it wasn't really showcasing his level of talent. And while I enjoyed the movie, the movie itself, you know, it was okay. Some people really liked it. Some people just don't like this new Alien series and the way they've been going, but I've enjoyed it all the way into Prometheus going forward. So what I'm imagining, looking at this, when I looked over his IMDb, he has a lot of little independent films that didn't get released or had very, very limited releases. So I'm wondering if he just does these big blockbuster budget films to get a paycheck, and then he's like, okay, cool, now I can actually like go and do these art artsy pieces that are more intimate, that are more personal maybe, and kind of focus more on my craft now that I've got paid. Because that's really the only thing I can think of when I'm looking over like what's going on with his career. He does these giant blockbuster spectacles where he gets paid, and then like the movie doesn't do that well, and you just kind of look at it and you're like, why does he keep doing films like this? But then when you look over his roster of like what the films he's acted in, he has like all of these little indie films. So like, I'm just trying to like, piece the puzzle together. And what I'm coming up with is he just does this for the paycheck so that he can then go and do these smaller films where he probably won't get much money, if any, for these roles. And then like he can kind of focus on his craft and being an actor and everything else. Cause that's the only thing I could come up with, especially when I look at like his next movie is gonna be Kung Fury with David Hasselhoff and Arnold Schwarzenegger. And one of the most absurd plots with special effects and everything else that I've heard of. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I was just like, what is going on? But if he's gonna get paid so he can do smaller things that he's passionate about, that's cool too. Go ahead and sound off below with your thoughts about not just Kung Fury being remade, but also let us know what you think about Michael Fassbender as an actor and like his career. What are some of the highlights of his career performance wise that you've particularly enjoyed. Sound off in the comments below. Fox has moved the James Cameron Robert Rodriguez film Alita Battle Angel from July 20th to December 21st of this year. Link for the Variety article in the show notes below. There's been some films that have really been moving around as far as scheduling is concerned for this year going into next year. So I was pretty excited when I heard this news. I was like, cool, this is great because I'm actually really excited about this film. So if they're moving it from the summertime to Christmas time, yes, it is a bummer because now we have to wait longer to see this film and the trailers look super dope. So I was like, okay, kind of bummed out that we have to wait but I can wait if that means more people will get out to see it and it's as good as I hope it is. That way it'll make more money and maybe we can get a sequel out of it as well because the cast also looks dynamite. So I went ahead and pulled up the schedules for July and December. That way I could say with confidence, like, yeah, this was a good move. They're doing it because they think it'll have less competition. It might make more money during the holidays. Even though the holiday movies really don't make that much money because of everyone spending their dollars at Christmas, on Christmas presents or travel, etc. But I wanted to make sure. So I wanted to check the schedule to see what it would be up against. And let's talk about that right now. So I wrote down on my trusty notepad here. So looking at July, just the month of July, right? Because a movie
movie comes out and most people see it that opening weekend and then there's you know anywhere from 30 to 50 percent drop from week one to week two you're hoping that when it drops those people get out to the theaters to see it but if they don't what are they going to see the next week does it have any competition that second week that third week so i wanted to look at the month as a whole so we could have a better idea of what stacked competition is there before we're like oh this was a great move or this was a really bad move so in july july 6th we have the first purge and ant-man and the wasp so already right there the month of july is starting off pretty strong which if you don't get out to see those films opening weekend then definitely the second weekend you'll probably be seeing them for sure which is still okay because previously it was going to be released in the third week of july so for the second week of july we have skyscraper with the rock and Hotel Transylvania 3, the new animated film with Adam Sandler. A little bit more competition here because now you got a rock film. The Rock's been doing really well in the box office. People get out to see his films. Him and Tom Cruise may be the last two action heroes. They, you put their name on a film and people go out to see it. But, you know, the week before, so if you don't get out to see Skyscraper, because maybe you went to go see Ant-Man and the Wasp, now the next weekend, that's where maybe you're going to go see Skyscraper, and that's the weekend where Alita Battle Angel would have fallen, because its only competition was Mamma Mia 2. It is a different type of movie, so you're going to attract a different audience. So Alita Battle Angel really wouldn't be, that audience wouldn't be competing for ticket sales for the audience for Mamma Mia. But again, you've got Ant-Man and the Wasp, The First Purge, and Skyscraper all in theaters at the same time. So right now, this is looking like a good move to get it out of July and into the holiday season. Because the following week, right afterwards, you've got Mission Impossible 6 and then Teen Titans Go. Now, if you aren't familiar with Teen Titans Go, this is a very popular animated series, which I think is going to do very well in the summer months because kids are out of school and kids are really enjoying Teen Titans Go. So their parents are going to take them maybe once or twice to see this film. Because again, it's the summertime. Kids are out of school, so why not take them the movies but Mission Impossible 6 that's going to do big numbers so we're looking at it we're going the first purge Ant-Man and the Wasp Skyscraper and then Mission Impossible 6 all live action films that are easily going to pull the same audience that would go see Alita Battle Angel so right now we're going okay maybe it was smart to move it out of July and back to December. Because Hotel Transylvania 3, Teen Titans Go, and Mamma Mia really aren't going to pull too many people from Alita Battle Angel. But overall, the big challenges for them, the big hurdles would be the first Purge, Ant-Man the Wasp, skyscraper and mission impossible six so right now it feels like a really good move to get it out of july entirely and get it out into december for the holiday months all right so let's go ahead and look at december just so we can confirm our suspicions are correct and this was a wise strategic business move to get more people to see it to bring more money into the theater for this particular film coming out in december 14th we have spider-man into the spider-verse and mortal engines now both of these films even though spider-man into the spider-verse is animated it's miles morales as well as other spider-man characters and mortal engines looks like it's going to be really good too i feel like both of these films are going to pull an audience from Alita Battle Angel for sure. So if you don't get out for that opening weekend to see these two films, maybe you check them out the next weekend. But let's see what's coming out the following weekend. So coming out with Alita Battle Angel now on December 21st, we have the new Aquaman movie by James Wan. You've got the new Transformers movie Bumblebee. And you also have Holmes and Watson, which is Will Ferrell and John C. Riley. And then right after that, you've got Mary Poppins Returns and Bohemian Rhapsody on December 25th. This is not any better for this film. This is actually worse in my opinion because almost all of the films coming out in December are going to be pulling from the same demographic of viewer so it's going to be like this crazy like split of what movie are we going to go see opening weekend what are we going to see the next weekend like this is just throwing it in a pile of films that are all going to be competing for the same viewers Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse Mortal Engines Aquaman Transformers Holmes and Watson is going to be a comedy but it's going to still be pulling that same kind of adult audience when I realized this it completely pulled all of my enthusiasm away for this film because now I feel like they just bumped it back so maybe people will forget about it and then when it comes out it's going to get lost in the shuffle lost in the crowd because of how much competition surrounding it and it, we're not going to hear about it in December either this was such a bummer for me because I was so excited to see this because I really enjoyed the trailer and I was looking forward to like getting that big screen viewing to see the special effects and everything else and now we might not even get an IMAX screening because Aquaman or Transformers might pull that IMAX screening as well as like the Dolby Digitals right you've got these two giant 
giant established properties with Aquaman not necessarily established as Aquaman franchise, but definitely in the DC franchise with Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, right? This is an established character that's part of the DC universe of films. And then Transformers is always going to pull in an audience. And those are always special effects heavy. So that's probably going to be IMAX. That's probably going to be the Dolby Digital Premium Theaters, right? So what does that tell us about Alita Battle Angel? It got moved from July, got bumped, and it looked like it should have been moved, but then it gets placed in a worse situation for competition. Now, if this movie is incredible and everybody loves it and everybody goes and sees it and Aquaman underperforms and Transformers is a bust, just like the last Transformers movie was, okay, maybe then it was a good decision. Maybe like the Hollywood insiders, like they're really tracking this because they're like, look, we've heard some things about these films that just these films aren't going to be as good as people are hoping. And this is actually a safe bet, even though it looks crazy, but I'm not going to bet on that. I'm going to bet on the fact that they pushed it out of July because it's for whatever reason, not going to do what they assume it's going to do or what they hope it would have done. And they moved it back a couple months. So people may forget about it. And then it's going to get lost in the shuffle of December, which is such a bummer because I don't want to be negative about it. But when I look at it, I'm just like, man, I don't see any other way that this shakes out, except that people forget it, that it came out. And then all of these other films come out, especially with like an Aquaman and a Transformers movie. Like those two are just going to powerhouse that weekend against each other. Uh, if you can't get in to see Aquaman, you'll probably go see Transformers and vice versa. And then if you can't get into those two, maybe you go see Elite Battle Angel or you go see Mortal Engines a second time. Maybe you go see Into the Spider-Verse a second time. Like it just doesn't feel like this is movie is going to be any good anymore. Super bummed. I still want to see it though because it's Robert Rodriguez and James Cameron. So I'm still looking forward to seeing it now, but my spirits are definitely dampened. Go ahead and sound off below with your thoughts about the move for Alita Battle Angel being pushed from the summer to December and literally thrown right in the middle of what could be two summer blockbusters but are actually right before Christmas. Honorable mentions this week, Michael Keaton is in talks to star in What Is Life Worth? A biopic set after the tragic events of 9-11 for Mad River Pictures. Den of Thieves is getting a sequel. Director Paul King is in talks to direct a Willy Wonka film. Joaquin Phoenix is in talks to play the Joker in a standalone Joker movie. Melissa McCarthy and Tiffany Haddish are looking to team up in the drama The Kitchen, a screenplay written by Andrea Burloff based on a 2014 comic book series. All right, everybody, and that wraps up the news for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed the coverage as much as I enjoyed talking about the news with you. If you did, go ahead and give me that thumbs up because the thumbs up actually helps other people who like movie-related shows Find this movie-related show right here on YouTube. Hi, everyone. This is Jeremy Bernanski, and you've just finished watching the movie news segment. Now, if you enjoyed that, you may want to check out the Certified Rad playlist, which covers something awesome and uplifting that we found. Or you may want to go ahead and check out the Special Segments playlist, which covers just a range and variety of topics that I want to dig a little deeper in, but we don't necessarily have time for on the weekly show. We will see you guys next Monday for a brand new episode of Bernanski's vlog right here on YouTube at 10 a.m. PST. Have a great week, everybody. Take care.